Hello and welcome to EcoFarm. We are now into May and one of the first jobs we're going to have to do is we're going to have to look to see if anything needs to be weeded. I don't think most of the fields that were ploughed need to be weeded but certainly the old potato field that we first worked on will definitely need to be weeded so I think the first thing that we need to do is we need to head on down to the store and go and uh, buy a weeder. Of course, this being the Eco Series, we will not be able to use herbicide, so we'll have to manually, well, not manually, <laughs> but we would have to uh, mechanically weed, is what I think I was looking for. And I think we'll get this little puller, I think it's called, is it? not quite sure but um, yeah I think it'll work it's about the right size uh, the tractor can handle it nice and easily and off we go and we'll see when we get back to the farm and we'll get get weeding yeah so if you have wondering why we don't have to weed the other fields that we did um, generally speaking if you've plowed up a field um, you don't, well, weeds won't grow for that few first season. So every time you power the field, you um, effectively are killing the weeds. So that may be a way forward, and there's a bit of a balancing act, and that needs to be done um, as to whether we plow every time, which I'm not really keen to do. Um, it obviously uses a lot more power, etc. But then again, if we can plough with the with the um, with the electric tractor, that may be an option. Um, not sure what it does to the ground, or we just need to be very vigilant and check to see what the effect is of the weeding on our on our total uh, yield. If it's not too bad, then perhaps we can do a sort of a compromise and plough up every second time and just cultivate the other time. In any case, we shall work that out as we go along. This whole eco farm is pretty much a learning experience. There are not many examples to follow. And uh, yeah, and quite honestly, I'd like to work out my own solutions to the things <laughs> in the event. Yeah, that seems to be working quite nicely. The thing that worries me is that when you check the field, it says partially weeded. So I don't know whether it's going to affect the yield or not. And we'll keep an eye on this field. Um, very fortunate really to have it so that we can do it as a test case and I think if we get sort of higher than 90% yield um, with having just mechanically weeded then uh, I'd be quite happy with that and we'll just plough up every now and again it's going nice and easily Practice handling the weeder with ease, which is always good. Yeah, further down the line in this episode, we're going to be tending to well, not all of the meadow that we have on the farm, but a large percentage of it that we haven't utilized yet. And um, we're going to turn it into hay. And we're going to use that to, um, whatever we get from that, to finance a new little venture, which I think I mentioned in the last episode and said we would do it in this episode, but um, I don't think it'll happen in this episode, it'll happen in the next one. The, um, I think the tending to the meadows is going to take quite a while. There's a lot of ground that needs to be covered and um, I don't want to 
hire any big machinery. I want to do it with uh, the available tractor that we have. Well, there you go, that's pretty much done. That's the weeding done for the season basically. And as you can see there it says partially weeded. Weed partial, so I'm not quite sure how that's going to affect us. We'll just keep an eye on that. We're going to get this parked up. And uh, the next job, I think, is to go and check on the eggs. I don't think we'll have a huge amount of eggs, but um, eggs being a a fresh commodity as such. We don't want to be storing them, We'd rather get them sold as they are produced. So there's a trip pretty much every month down to the to sell our eggs. First of all we need to convert our trailer to a trailer that can um, load pallets because our eggs um, our egg trays are on pallets. So we're going to have a look at a vehicle workshop so that we don't have to traipse into the shop workshop to get um, to change the configuration of our trailer. Basically we just take the sides off and that's a bit of a trek down all the way to the to the store to be able to just take the sides off. So let's have a look and see what type of vehicle workshop we can get. I want to have a little bit of a building. Because quite often I just use the little toolbox. But I like this little workshop. It's about the right size for the farm. It'll look good. And it'll fit in nicely. No, no. No, that would. Um, uh, no, I don't think it needs to be there. I think I'm going to put it where, if you start this game on um, on new farmer mode, there's a workshop. I think it's just in front of that stone. Well, that stone, that, <laughs> uh, that rock. Not the big outcrop, the small little outcrop there. Yeah, there we go. We're heading in the right direction now. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Fits in perfectly. No landscaping needed. That's where it needs to be. Nice and easy. Of course we need to put a solar panel up for that. I'll just get that done quickly. So it does cost us a little bit of money initially to um, to do the or to follow the rules of supplying power um, and putting a solar panel up or a wind generator but that's fine bearing in mind that they do give us a little bit of extra income um, by the overproduction that we do which is purposely done I think I mentioned in the last episode so that we can sell it back to the grid um, and to help with the with the green energy for the town the living area and the shopping area of course hopefully we'll be able to get that fully green or fully eco um, friendly by the end of the series that's not the right angle Try this one. That looks about right. I think we put it in the right. Oh dear, it's not quite right. <laughs> sticking up in there. I think it was a flat one. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about it now. That's okay. Um, we'll uh, 
we'll change it, we'll, we'll fix it at a later stage. So that's another thing that we'll have to be mindful of, is the pitch of the roof, whether we can get a solar, solar panel on it. As I said, that doesn't have to be right next to the building that has been built. We could have put that up on the, um, on the shed um, roof, which has got perfect pitch for, for it. Right, let's just get into the workshop. I was talking too much and forgot to park up the van in the workshop. <laughs> so, uh, luckily it wasn't too far to go. Right, here we go. So we just uh, customised the trailer and we'll put it onto an autoload for pallets and that's easily done. It doesn't cost us anything because we've already paid for the removable panels when we bought the um, the trailer so it makes it pretty versatile it's probably end up being too small but um, for now I think it's it's good It'll certainly be big enough to handle our egg production and any future productions I would think the delivery thereof so we'll just nip on We've still got to do some roads for you as well instead of just traipsing across the field here we go looks like not a huge amount, but uh, hopefully we've got over a thousand eggs t to deliver. Chickens are looking nice and happy, running around the place. Right, we'll get that loaded. There we go, first lot loaded. Just have to go through to each little area. That's nice, easily done. Can't see any chicks yet. So of course, um, once the ch uh, first batch of chicks are born, we'll probably be at full capacity. Any um, chicks that are born that are over the capacity of the fields will just be sold automatically as day olds. Going, uh, there's plenty of people are looking for day old chicks. Right, that's good. Yeah, it doesn't. Well, it's not a huge production, but then again, we didn't have a full day's production, so I think it'll be okay. And of course, as we get to full chick or full chicken capacity. Um, I doubt we'll get a pellet from each of them, but still, from, e from each uh, field. But basically, between the four collection areas, we are close to a pellet. So I think we'll deliver these up to the farmer's market for now. Hopefully we get a reasonable amount of money from them. Need to take it nice and easily, we don't want to speed in town. We got a phone call as we were going up there. The pizzeria is desperate for eggs, so um, the farm shop is okay for me to deliver directly to them. That's good, yeah. I'm quite happy with that, so that's our first income from the farm. We're on our way, as they say. <laughs> now we get back to the farm, and we're going to have to start with the pretty mundane task of, uh, of tending to the meadows. So we're going to take a cut of grass off the meadows, um, simply because we're not going to use them straight away so we just need to tend to them so that the take down all the dry stalks etc and of course it does give us a bit of 
grass um, and I think as I said we will convert it into hay and sell it and that will hopefully finance the next little bit of expansion that I want to do but for now let's get a mower organized 75 horsepower we can handle that quickly we'll just lease it and then we'll uh, nip on down to the shop and go and pick that up Yes, with the mowing, it's uh, it's one of the perennial problems that we're going to have with um, having a small tractor. Oops, too far back. <laughs> it's okay, it's leased. We don't have to worry about it. <laughs> then we did it again, just to, <laughs> as long as it connects up. Hopefully, hopefully the shop didn't see it. <laughs> I'm sure they did. Uh, in any case, let's get on back up to the farm. Right, so we've got all this area behind these trees here. And it stretches up to the top tree line that you can see there. So, and quite a way down. But as we go through this exercise of uh, tending to the meadows, you will certainly get feel for the size of the land that we have still available to us um, and I haven't fully planned out exactly how I'm going to utilize it but I think this sort of flattish area here might be for some type of production um, that we will be able to utilize so the flat, any flat areas will be utilized for, for building things as such. So I'll start off just by doing this top area. I'm also trying to find it basically where our boundaries are. <laughs> and uh, it's one of my, my tricks of playing farming simulators if when I play, um, something like this where like no man's land or western wilds or something like that to um, to find the boundaries I normally use the old mower and uh, it'll give you a good idea of where the boundaries are of the field yeah there we go it's, it's a, it doesn't always necessary look like it's straight but it probably is <laughs> it's more likely me that's driving skew as they say <laughs> uh, yeah, so we'll have to I'm not going to be doing any removal of obstacles like rock outcrops etc so that's pretty much the whole area so we've got a huge Two sides, two sides of a rectangular, basic, basically. So this area that we're busy finishing off here now is um, runs up adjacent to the to the big field, to the top of the big field, if, as such. And um, you'll see as we go back on our left-hand side, we'll have the um, the chickens. So it's a huge area of, um, that we still have available to us. And um, the tending of the meadows is basically just so that we cut down the grass so that it can grow again, basically. Regenerates the area of It's just about finished, a couple of small things still to do around the trees. I'm not going to spend too much time um, making sure it's all done perfectly. So the scope for 
future development is is huge of course we have to be mindful as well of um, of, of doing um, and producing products that are going to benefit the town as well and not just our pocket and I suppose that's also part of eco farming really is uh, to do it as, uh, as eco-friendly as possible and uh, and make a bit of money for ourselves but also to help the community along its way to becoming energy self-sufficient right uh, we'll just pop down and get a tether now um, 100 horsepower will handle that quite easily we'll get that done it's also going to take a while so um, you would have noticed there that I did do a bit of jump cuts um, otherwise this episode would be four episodes long basically because of the time that it takes to to do the vast area of meadow that we needed to work on with the equipment that is available to us. Did want to show you. Oh, that was that was close. Need to be a little bit more careful. Oh, we need to we need to go and. Uh, I was going to say refuel, but uh, we need to go and recharge. <laughs> so the charging station is here. There's two charging stations here. They're quick chargers, so they shouldn't take too long. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to obviously um, help the uh, the town area to be able to utilise. wind generators or something along those lines to supply the energy for these for these charging stations that are in town at the moment I'm not sure we'd be generating enough income from the excess of our solar panels but as time goes by that'll be okay and also want to get one of these on the farm so that we don't have to be reliant on popping into town again but that'll come a little way down the line I think right so we're back at the farm we'll get the tedding done this has got a nice decent width so be a bit quicker than the than the actual mowing there we go it looks like we going to get a better idea of where the boundaries are let's just see if that yeah it does Ted so it's fine let's see if this top will yeah it doesn't it don't have access to that part of the land it's not a problem it's not a problem it'll just mulch down into the to the next door neighbor's field I'm sure he doesn't mind bit of added fertilizer <laughs> oh dear here we go yeah it's handling this pretty easy nine miles an hour it's going to take a while it's a vast vast area So we'll put in some more lands here. Um, it's going to depend on what we need um, in terms of new productions and such like. So as we as we generate a need, we'll try and fulfil it ourselves. It does mean that quite often with um, with production units, we'll have to buy in raw material to start with. 
and then try and make ourselves as self-sufficient as possible. But that's all down the line as such. Just put this on, speed this up just so that you get an idea of the actual full size so that we just go past the chicken on the left there. And as you can see that's a, yeah. It's not a, it's not a small area. <laughs> well we'll get on and do the rest of the tedding. And then we'll move on. Next step will probably be to get a windrower, windrow this all up and then we'll need to bale and sell it. So still a few steps to go. The added advantage of this really is uh, is that we will be able to um, get some sort of income from the sale of the hay. I did consider doing silage but I thought to myself uh, we don't produce any, well we're not going to be doing any um, any cows so it would probably be the right thing not to do silage although we would have got more money from silage and I don't think it would have taken that much longer the wrapping might have taken a bit longer but yeah we, we could have obviously skipped the wrapping and I think come to think of it if we were to ever do silage we would need to skip the wrapping because of the plastic that it's using we wouldn't be able to wrap the plastic so although my thought was wrong or my reasoning was wrong to start with turns out not doing silage is a, or not wrapping for silage is a good move eco-wise of course <laughs> good stuff I think that's that just about done get that folded up and we'll get that back to the shop and uh, we'll lease ourselves a windrow I don't think I've got anything missed. So we also need something that the that's big enough to handle the job fairly economically, and uh, we can pull 60 horsepower. Yeah, I think it'll do the job. It's not the biggest, but we can handle it with ease. So we've leased that. There are of course leasing costs that would be needed to be offset against the cost of the of the selling of the bales but that shouldn't be too much of a problem of course this just is meadow grass so the yield won't be fit fantastic um, but hopefully we get around about 50 bales out of this not going to make us rich but I think it will uh, go a long way to getting us moving forward and as I mentioned every episode so far we still haven't drawn down any of our bank loan that is available to us I did get an indication from the from the bank manager that it would be just shy of half a million euros um, in terms of our credit line with the bank which is a little bit less than I'd hoped for but I think we can manage that quite carefully we must probably use it up quite quickly so that we can get moving and then there will be a bit of a a struggle to, well not a struggle, we'd have to uh, have a bit of a bit of a consolidation phase to um, to enable us to uh, to basically get the anything we spend the, the bank loan on get it producing so I want to utilize that mainly for things that will produce income 
and of course green power somewhere along the line right so let's I'm sure you're getting sick and tired of my series and uh, utilizing this John Deere baler but honestly I don't think I've found anything that comes close to it in terms of the cost per bale basically of uh, of this machine I think it is the most cost effective piece of equipment in the whole of FS22 right let's get ourselves unfolded and get some baling done one of my favorite occupations <laughs> I don't know why but I just love baling I suppose I, I, I love the fact that it's a that the end product is pretty much oh, I don't want to say immediate because it's still it's still got to be wrapped and bound and everything like that but you see the end product that being a bale relatively quickly just spitting out the back of the machine <laughs> uh, I used to love it even on the on the real farms when the when it was baling season I'd spend a half a day just watching the balers if I wasn't doing it myself quite often we'd get contractors in to do that uh, we didn't have our own balers on the farm but still yeah there we go you can see it being produced Fantastic. This is probably going to take quite a while. It's quite a bit of cross. As I said, the yield is probably not that great, so we won't get hundreds of bales. We'll get tens of bales, but I don't think we'll get hundreds of bales. I don't think we'll get anywhere near a hundred. Be happy with half that, about 50 bales. There's, oh, I suppose there's little bits and pieces that we might have missed, mainly on the edges where we've kind of overcut our boundaries. Not stressing about that. As I said, they'll just mulch down into, into the grass. We'll just do a couple of more of these bells before we'll jump to the end. Just enjoying it too much. <laughs> yeah, this whole operation in reality took quite a while. I wanted to give you a feel of the scope of it so that. Um, You could appreciate the the, um, the scale of the operation to get this these meadows just looked after, basically. And we'll do that every summer time um, for areas that are not not being utilised. We've just got this one to do it. Oops. Didn't put the roller down. <laughs> Wondered why it was going so quickly. That's better. That's what we wanted to do. <laughs> Actually, I think that was the first time that I that I did that on the uh, on the whole of this um, this little bailing escapade of ours, which is unusual for me because normally it's just about every second 
time I lift the there again I just cheated there and didn't even lift it when I drove around <laughs> uh, what's my excuse oh, just trying to I was just trying to collect a couple of the bits and pieces that were lying around this tractor is struggling a little bit with this bale on the uphill I mean it is a fairly steep uphill I suppose it's not too much of a problem Get that off loaded, and that's that done. Now we'll get this back to the shop, and we'll go and get ourselves a auto load bale loader. There's our workshop in its glory. Yeah, you can get solar panel doesn't look good on there. I won't change it immediately because. We're going to lose a bit of money on it and we'll have to put in something more in terms of power but we'll wait till we've got a bit more money and get it fixed up. There we go, this is a autoload trailer. We'll back, get back up to the farm and we'll go and start picking up those barrels and we can get them sold. Make a bit of money. There we go. That into the operating position. That's not it. Let's get going. There we go. And we're away. I suppose I could have loaded this with the uh, with the front loader of the tractor, but I just wanted to um, get the job done. It's been taking it has taken quite a while. I'll just skip through on a bit of manic time lapse. Uh, so we, we'll get 98, just under 100. How many we got on there? So that's 24. About halfway through, so I think it'll be just under the 50 bales. Let's get that offloaded. Now I've forgotten how to offload on this trailer. That's not it. Okay, there we go. No. <laughs> there we go. Not the most realistic way of offloading, I suppose. In any case, we try to be as realistic as possible most of the time, but sometimes needs must, as they say. Well, that's my excuse. <laughs> Not so sure I should have done this on the time lapse. So how much have we got there? That's another 21, so that's yeah, 45. Decent amount. So 28. Yeah, we'll probably get close to 30,000 for these bales overall I think we won 28,000 before we brought the first light out there we go, it's a much more civilised way of moving them over even if it's not realistic try and get them all onto the platform so that they yep they all go so there's 15,000 for that just over 60,000 yeah so just over 30,000 not to be scoffed at 
Well, that's where we're going to end this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe. <laughs> and we'll catch you in the next episode. Cheerio.